Welcome back to another Amber and the Truth podcast episode. And today we're going to be talking about how I live with my enemy. Now, um, when I say enemy, I'm using that in a literal sense and a non literal sense. It's, it's hard to explain. Let me explain. So, upon coming to Christ, and learning about who he is and living for him, there's been a few things that have come to my, you know, come to the forefront about this walk that I'm on. It's difficult, beyond difficult. However, it's only as difficult as we make it because God will literally lessen your load. He will literally make things light for you, give you more strength to go through what you go through. But we're so used to just feeling weak and and, and stunted that we don't take advantage of all the strength he can give us so I've only been on this walk for almost two years now not very long and one thing that I've come to notice is that demons are very much real they're very real and they're more common than people think I'm 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 willing to take it a step further and be like everybody knows a person who has demons everybody you know somebody probably multiple people i wouldn't even say one person multiple people who have demons they're either sleeper demons that don't come out and you've never seen them or they're demons that are out in the forefront you know that they have them and you just well not you not that you know that they have them but it's just like they are prevalent if you are a christian with discernment you will know who has them and who don't God has blessed me with discernment in certain areas, and that is one of the areas he gave me discernment in. I can literally see if a demon is talking to me or if the person is talking to me. And what's crazy about all of this is that I have to deal with it in my family. Like, multiple people in my family have demons. Like, multiple. Like, majority of my intermediate family, they all are under, uh, I wouldn't say possession, but demon control. Now, um, these are the same people who know that Christ is real, who know that God is real. And at some point, wanted a relationship and then the devil came in and kind of ruined it for them. Um, I would like to talk about specific people. I don't want to name names, but in order for me to be real and to be honest, I have to speak on these people because these are things that I deal with. And only people who follow Christ will understand. So... Um, when I moved back here in 2020 and I was getting my relationship with God um, back to where it needed to be, where it should have been, um, my sister let me know that people were going to start to hate me simply because I chose Christ. And at that time, I didn't f- fully understand what she meant by that. Like, they were going to hate me. Um, I kind of knew and I kind of didn't. I was just like, okay, they're going to, you know, they're not going to like me because, you know, Jesus. But I really didn't understand that these people are not going to like you because of Jesus. Like, they're not, they're going to meet you, size you up, or just give you dirty looks, or just assume something about you, and then automatically hate you. And it's not even you that they hate. They hate the God inside of you because the demon inside of them, who is on the opposing side, the devil side, hates God. So, they're going to hate the God in you. So, it's not really personal. One thing that I had trouble with is understanding how it's not personal because you're literally coming after me. That's what it feels like. You're coming after me. How is this not personal? So over the over the course of a year, I've learned many people in my family have demons, a lot. And they have targeted me and my sister to no end with BS. And it's fascinating to watch because... A lot of people who don't understand this world, who don't understand life, will tell you they're family. Regardless, at the end of the day, they're family. And to someone who doesn't understand the spiritual battle that that it is, they're just like, you don't leave family alone. You don't stop messing with family. Family is family. Forgive them. And yes and no. Jesus never said in the Bible to let yourself be abused. To let people push you around, step on you, take advantage of you, let them treat you like crap. He never said that. He you, he never said that. Never said that. What he did say, however, was that when these people cursed you, step on you, and, and punch you, and do whatever they do to you, 
to bless them, to pray for them. And I know that sounds easier said than done, trust me. But he didn't tell he didn't tell people how to react in a certain way. He just told them to pray for them. And for a long time that was hard for me to do because it felt like the attacks were personal. I grew up with my grandmother. She raised me from the moment I was born to my substance abused mother till I was 18 years old, till I moved out of the house for the first time. And I had no idea that I was abused physically, verbally, and mentally my entire childhood until I came to Christ. I thought what I was going through was normal for every child. I thought that every child didn't have toys. I thought every child sat in front of the TV and TV raised them and TV spent time with you. I thought that threatened to get beat for things that your parent lost and if you didn't find I thought that was normal I thought it was okay like um it's it's me it's me I know it's me like I you know as a child I I thought that was normal you know what I'm saying and um I didn't realize it was an abuse until I left home for college and then I began to share with people my upbringing and they look at me like are you okay and I'm like, yeah, like, what do you mean? Like, I'm all right. And they look at me like, are you sure? Because what you just described was abuse. And I'll just look at them like, oh, word, that, that was abuse? Like, oh, snap, it was, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and I didn't get discernment until later. So I grew, once I realized it was abuse in college, I was like, oh, snap, that made me distant. It made me... Not want to have anything to do with her, to be honest. I had a I had a hatred for her. And um, it would come and go. I would miss her and go home and then realize why I stayed away from home. And then go back to uh, where I lived in L.A. And then it would be a cycle of that. Going back and forth and me missing her, coming home and realizing why the hell I stayed away. And it was one particular um, holiday to where... Her demons were out. This is before I even knew they existed or even real. Her demons were out and they verbally abused me like no other. They told me I wasn't ish. I wasn't ever going to be ish. Um, You are a failure. I don't like you. Whatever you could possibly say to someone you raised that would hurt them was said. And (laughs) what's crazy is that that was the straw for me I was like okay well you never gonna hear from me again you never gonna I'm never gonna speak to you again if whatever I gotta do to keep myself away from you I will do and that was in I want to say 2019 maybe 2019 2018 probably before to uh, before the pandemic and I, I meant that when I create a boundary for myself with people, I mean it. I don't change my mind. I don't just waver depending on what you do or anything like that. My mind is made up. So I had meant that. And this is before I had any time to grow with God. This is I, like I was saved at this time, but I didn't know who God was. I didn't have no relationship with him. So um, I come back home and we're learning about Christ. We're learning about God. We're learning how to have a relationship. And here I am encountering this demon and all of a sudden I can tell the difference between them and her and that's the discernment God gave me and I'm, I'm like as she's going off cursing yelling whatever she's doing I'm looking at her in her eyes and I see no light not that I'm looking for a reflection of light I'm talking about the light of God like there's no light in your eye like we're standing outside in broad daylight and there's no reflection coming out of them it's pure darkness and that is the day where I was conflicted because I'm living in this house that you want me at God you said I'm supposed to be here you have me here and then the person who raised me who I love who's the only person who quote unquote had my back in a sense you know what what I thought was having your back um is mean to me and rude and nasty and wishes horrible things on me and wants me to fail in life and when I do laugh at me in my face like 
what? For a minute, it was it was hard. I didn't want anything to do with her. I didn't want to talk. I didn't want to interact because I'm just like, I don't want to deal with that, Lord. Like, this person is evil and mean and nasty. Like, why are you making me deal with that? And for a long time, I questioned God on why I was here and why I was back in this house. And what was his purpose for me being here? And I didn't get it for so long. I was just like, why am I here? Like, it's it's literally hindering our relationship with you. Like, I can't become the best Christian I can become, God, because I'm in this house with a demon <laughs> who come out and speak to me very blatantly. It's it's they speak to me like I speak to anybody else. Like normal people have conversations. They speak to me. I'm not saying in my head or anything. I'm talking about let's me let's just say I go to my grandma, ask her for something, and she's like, "No, get out of my face." Literally, they sound like that. I'm not even playing. I'm not. That's not an exaggeration. That's what they sound like coming out of her mouth, and I've, I've, they made me not want to ask her for anything, talk to her about anything, anything. And then God began to work on my heart to change the way I reacted to that because it number one it freaked me out like what the f- like it's weird knowing somebody who is being controlled by evil spirits like it's weird it's people don't even think it's real and I'm dealing with it on a regular basically everyday basis and it was new territory for me and I was just like I don't know how to do this like but God um honed in on my heart and he began to work on it he began to give me knowledge on her life before having children and even having grandchildren and great grands and he gave me a lot of knowledge and he worked on my heart and softened it to at this point to where I'm looking at her with sorrow with 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 pity because all that anger that you're dispewing towards me is literally what you feel you're doing nothing but projecting the anger and the hurt and the sadness that you've experienced onto me it is projection and on top of that it is a spiritual fight it because like it's a it's a um the type of demons i'm dealing with are um demons that like to play mind games they like to literally play mind games to the point to where you think that you're going crazy they will literally have you thinking that you don't know what you're talking about what you see is wasn't is isn't what you just saw what you heard isn't what you just heard they will literally have you questioning your existence like why am i here like you cannot live in this house where i live without having christ because they will get under your skin and they will begin to gnaw at your spirit and make you miserable it is by god's strength that i have joy and i have contentness in this house because there's no way you can you cannot achieve that on your own there's been many instances to where i fought with them demons um on physical level like i've had to fight my grandmother not even fight i would say defend myself because the the god in me is just showing glory just showing shining out of me pouring out of my pores and they hate that with every fiber of their being and they attack me i've been attacked by her multiple times and to and to, to give you a comparison this never happened when i wasn't living for christ never had these type of disputes never had any physical fights other than the beating she would give me when i was a child never really happened until i decided to follow christ it's wild um i have fought and argued with almost every family member that has demons i have an auntie who has demons and i remember we had finished uh, um this was my first fight ever i've never been in a fight with anybody up until this point this was a uh, 2019 i want to uh, no i'm sorry this was in 2020 or maybe 2021 no that wasn't last year it was it, it was in 2020 uh, me and my sister had just finished bible study and then my auntie came in there angry about ten dollars you you heard me correctly ten dollars my sister um had used her card for something a while ago and forgot to remove it and i guess apple music was charged to her card instead of coming in saying hey my card got charged ten dollars can you give me my money back and my sister would have been like oh yeah my mistake hey let me give you your money back this is how I, this is how you know demons are in the middle of anything that is chaotic going on because nothing makes sense 
there's no logic there's no um accountability no one is trying to resolve an issue they only want to amp it up so at this point my auntie is upset and come in raising and cussing at my sister over ten dollars so i get up and i'm still in the spirit i get up and i go follow them outside because something tells me that this is going to get worse than it is so long story short we end up in a fight me and my auntie and we're tussling and on the ground and all these type of things and um God had me throughout that entire fight. If you read the Bible, you know that God will help you in a war. He will help you in a fight. He will have you win. And in this fight, I'm basically being choked, but not really. Like, her hands are around my neck, but I feel nothing. It's almost like her hands aren't there. And um, she swings to take a, um, a billy club. Not a billy club. What are those things that you put on your steering wheel to lock them? She takes a swing at me with that. And it is almost like a supernatural hand stops her from hitting me because she goes full force mm. but it's like slows down mid-air like it's almost like somebody is editing this i swear i'm this i'm not making this up someone's it's almost like someone's editing this she swings and her hand slows down mid-air and taps me like boop on my head not hard at all and at that point the fight de-escalates and she leaves or not and she leaves and it's and like everyone's calming down we're pushing her outside or whatever so we're trying to calm down avery who is my niece at the time who's literally seeing all of this and um randomly the demon wants to keep it escalated as it is de-escalating the demon wants to keep it up and the demon comes back and tries to grab um avery out of my sister's hands and it was real random because she had walked outside we thinking she about to leave and go home and we can just recuperate and figure out what the hell just happened and she decides to take her snatch her out of her hands and tell us give me the baby and take her and run away with her we're like where did that come from like even to this day i'm like that that was a de- that was an escalation from the demons because that didn't make any sense it wasn't about her she was nowhere near in it and yet you brought her into it and it makes sense and 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 even though she didn't, she didn't end up taking um, Avery away. It's just like the thought of doing that, just to egg it on, just to keep BS going. That's what demons will do. And it was just, that was my first spiritual fight, physical spiritual fight. And I was just like, wow, this is crazy. I've never had to fight a family member before. And the entire time while she was cussing and going off and they're trying to throw their harsh words at me, calling me lesbian and calling me gay and you look like a man and this, that, 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 the things that I think that are hitting me. And they're not. I'm just singing in my head and I'm singing out loud that I got the victory. I got the victory. I got the victory. I got the victory. No cap. I was really singing that while I'm while they're cussing and screaming. And eventually she goes away. And I'm left to just like make sure to pray that I didn't do anything wrong. That I didn't escalate this or anything that I shouldn't have done. You know what I'm saying? And I got the word from my father that I did nothing wrong. I did what I was supposed to do. <laughs> and that was my first physical fight in the spirit of fighting demons with my family and it was just like wow like that's crazy like and the second one was with my grandmother and it was um it's like it's it's, me and my grandmother have fought physically maybe three times since i started to follow christ and each time it has broken my heart because number one it's sad because the anger projection the the despair the depression the misery she's going through is a projection two it's sad because there's nothing i can do about it all i can do is pray i can't force her to want to get rid of them because to be delivered from demons you have to want it you have to know that they're there and you have to want it them gone and it's almost like they have her in an illusion that she's saved and sanctified when she's not she's literally on her way to hell right now and there's nothing i can do about it I've, me and my sister have tried to help to say things god has told us to say to use scriptures or whatever and these demons don't care they are running her life they don't allow her to eat sleep or give a damn about nobody but herself and what's crazy is that when the um in instances where i do want to speak to her i have to literally go to her and be like let me speak to my grandmother because when the demons are out i can tell like i told you i can tell when they're out because she has this mean horrible look on her face like like a monster like just 
like horrible look on her face and the minute i say let me speak to my grandmother it's almost like if i can like have a, a, a sound effect for the warping that it that happens in front of my eyes like whoosh and here she comes like hey with a smile on her face and i'm like every single time it happens even though i've been knowing about this for two years now it still blows my mind because it's just like wow this life that i'm living is real this ain't no book this ain't no comic book this ain't no movie this ain't no tv show this is a real life that i'm living i'm literally having to fight demons not what the world thinks fighting demons is the world thinks fighting demons is having them <laughs> no i actually fight demons i strap up and i'm putting my armor of jesus christ and i go out there and i fight them on his behalf and it's 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 weird and it's strange and it's taken me a while to get used to to just realizing oh this is real and this is real life and she is kind of my enemy because the demons in her don't like the god in me they constantly fight with me they hate me so much they have verbally told me i hate that you're here I wish you would have never came back. Only because I am the Moses of me, my sister, and my best friend in this house. God has appointed me the leader to help us stay on track, to help us keep us on track, and to help us get to wherever God has us. Our promised land, you know? And they can't stand that I do that. They can't stand that they don't run anything anymore in this house. That they don't have the, the wherewithal to dictate everything in this house. It's because I follow God I do what he says I'm obedient and they can't stand that they are they despise me I'm currently following God's will right now and God's will is that I don't work is that I spend time with him and I'm do what he's called me to do which is make these YouTube videos and to create these podcast episodes and to spread his message out there that is what God called me to do and in the meantime, I'm not making any money, but somehow God manages to pay all of my bills every single time he does it. <laughs> and they have recently just told me that I ain't ish. I'm not even trying to get a job. I'm lazy. I'm this, that, and the third. And all I do is say, I'm following the will of God. And it doesn't look like what it looks like, what it's supposed to look like to the rest of you. And that's fine. I get that. I understand that. My life is not going to look like what y'all want it to look like. And as long as I'm obedient to God and he has me, I'm good. I don't really care what you think. Because majority of the time, people trying to tell you about your life are miserable. They don't have contentment. They don't have God's joy and God's love and his hope backing their lives and how to live on this floating rock. They don't have that. So they, they can't fathom how you could have it. Like, why are you so joyful? Why are you so happy? And all I can say is I am blessed. I have God. You should get you some too. He's not only for me. He's for all of you. And to end this, I want to share with how I'm reacting to it. Because there's certain ways you can react to news and, and, and things like that. And I just feel like I'm handling it pretty well. I, you know, um, to have to watch my grandma hate love me. It, it, it's 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 really eye-opening like she wants to support me and wants to love me and then the demons in her is like nah cut that out hate her talk rude to her give her a nasty look roll your eyes like it is a literal spiritual fight within her and i look at it and i watch it every single day and the last altercation we got in was on her birthday and demons has sent other demons from other parts of my um, my family to come and try to rough us up that day. No cap. My grandma, the demon, called her auntie, who has a demon, who called her nephew, who has a demon. And they all sat there and they came at us over food that she wasn't even going to eat. If you want to know what I'm talking about, um, being tested and tried is a podcast episode where I describe what happened on my grandmother's birthday. Um, it was just, it was long story short, my grandmother got sent lobster for her birthday that she doesn't even eat or like. Um, nobody told us that she was being sent this food and on the receipt, it had the name of somebody else. So we're assuming it was a mistake. We eat, we ate a little bit of the food. Turns out it was hers. 
her demon cousin, her demon nephew, got upset and riled up and decided to come after us and ruin it, really. It didn't need it to be ruined. It could have been, it didn't have to escalate to that point, but it did. And what was crazy about it is that in hindsight, everything could have been resolved that day, but it didn't because the demons don't want anything resolved. They want it escalated. And what's crazy is that when all of that happened, my grandmother wasn't even mad yet. It wasn't until she walked outside, her demon came out, talked to the other demons. Other demons called other demons. They called us to get it, to get at us. That's exactly what happened. And it is a, it's it's kind of a struggle every day to not take everything she does personal. I'm gonna tell you, and be honest with you right now. It's hard not to do that. It's hard not to take what you're doing personal to me because it's personally affecting me. And what I want to give and encourage people out there who are dealing with these, who are, who who actively live with their enemy, is to go to God. Keep God in your back pocket. Keep your Bible open and stay in constant prayer. That is the only way to defeat these demons. It's to stay in constant prayer. It's to stay in your word because they will try to use the word against you. They'll try to use guilt trips and, and whatever this world wants against you. Because remember, according to the world, I'm a bum. I don't want a job. I don't want to work. I'm nothing. But according to God, I'm everything. He loves me beyond more than I can ever imagine. He wants the best for me. And all he wants right now is my time. And he will do the rest. You know how many people on earth would love to not work and have their bills paid? Guess who has that going on? Me. I have that going on. Because I have God. And I'm beyond blessed. And I can't complain about anything. I refuse to complain about anything. I have nothing to complain about other than my grandma getting on my nerves every now and then with her demons. <laughs> other than that, stay in constant prayer. Stay close to God. Because that demon can't stand light that's shining out of you they hate it it's blinding them and they're going to try to do everything to dim it to diminish it to get rid of it and you need to stay in your word so that it never happens keep your foot on these demons neck because they keep their foot on yours they never let up so you should never let up and here's the thing i love my grandma with all my heart god has softened my heart so much that when i look at her all I can think about is how much I care for her and how sad it is that she might die in her sin. I love her so much is ridiculous. And I could never say that. God has worked, God has done so much work in me in the past two years that I can't even begin to explain in this one episode. I love her and I wish her the best and I really do pray for her. I pray for her to come to him before she take her last breath Please, God, gather my grandmother and let her realize that you are the way, the truth, and the life. But again, we can't force it. God doesn't go against free will. She got to want it for herself. So if you're listening, pray for her. Also pray for me. <laughs> sometimes it gets difficult in this house. And sometimes my life is in danger in this house. But at the end of the day, can't no man pluck me out of God's hands. Can no demon pluck me out of God's hands. So, in conclusion, God is love. <laughs> love your enemies. Do good against those who wish you bad. And watch how God bless you. Because not only does she wish me bad and always plotting on my downfall and literally laughs in my face when I do fall or fail in any type of thing in life, God turns right around and makes a table in front of her face. <laughs> in front of their face. And all I can do is sit and enjoy what God has placed on that table. <laughs> it's crazy. It's wild to think about. But I want to thank you guys for listening and watching. Hit that like button if you're on YouTube. And subscribe and comment below if you're on any other listening device. Apple Music or Apple Podcast or uh, Spotify, go ahead and give me a rating. That helps me out a lot. appreciate everything you guys are doing. And as always, I will see you or you will see me next time. Bye.